Mayant and I'm the co-founder of Groupstream. Well, Groupstream is a group storytelling platform that empowers groups to tell stories of any shared experience using their social media, using Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and YouTube. And the idea sprang out of the Egyptian revolution where we noticed that Egyptians were documenting a, the revolution in real time using social media and fo photos off their cell phones and cameras. And um, it's not unique to Egypt. Basically, we just today, uh, a, a quarter of a billion photos are uploaded to Facebook and 48 hours of video on YouTube every minute. And that's not mentioning Twitter or any of the other services. For a, the social media behavior these days in the social media age is people are spending maybe six to half hours to seven hours a day creating all this media. But how do you tell stories using this media instead of getting it buried under you know whatever is newer and having it scattered across different services? Uh, so that's the idea. But Groupstream, um, uh, to give you some context, it actually started, since the idea started with the revolution, our first project was called the 18 Days in Egypt and we launched it in January uh, this month, uh, during the anniversary, uh, to collect stories of like all, last, sorry, <laughs> to collect stuff that happened last year and uh, during the, those first 18 days and all the events since and the anniversary. So it's basically open to anything related to Egypt, whether it's news or arts or culture. Um, and trying to create a, a collaborative documentary about Egyptian history. So do you, does someone started. curate this, or is it completely crowdsourced, or I mean, how does it work? It's crowdsourced, um, but we do have a group uh, of people that are working with us that are creating stories as well. So while it's crowdsourced and open to the public, and right now there's no curator, everyone submits their media and their point of view, and we're open to any point of view. The 18 Days in Egypt also started with six people. They're uh, we're calling them fellows. So uh, it's basically they, for six weeks they were young students that are interested in uh, journalism and they would go out and interview people or sort of be evangelists for the project and sort of set the tone of it with them being the ambassadors for what this project is supposed to be because this concept of a crowdsourced history project that's you know all online and using social media is it's new here it's not as so we had a uh, six ambassadors and we raised a uh, $20,000 on Kickstarter, uh, crowdfunding, to, to basically hire more people all over Egypt, for all the different governance. So the idea is to work with a local NGO here, they're called Go Local, and to, uh, to teach students who are interested in this, uh, train them in video editing and uh, uh, social media, maybe getting them the right equipment, uh, flip cams, things like that, and extending this for the rest of the year with this money. Um, and we want to make sure we cover like the the oases like Kharga and Dakhla, and we want to have Suez and Sinai, p things that are under-reported or people don't know really what's happening in these areas. We still want to make sure we cover them um, and from, a, from a point of view of historical perspective of the future. So that's sort of where the, the project that started this all. And then while we were working on 18 Days, we realized, well, this is, you know, that Japan earthquake happened at the Vancouver riots. This is a platform that, you know, we need something that would cover all, the world, basically. So that's where Groupstream came out of over uh, the fall last year. So we built Groupstream and uh, we obviously have uh, ideas for where to take it. Um, and I we're working on the next steps for this platform, but uh, that's the, that's it in a nutshell. We want it to be a platform where people can use it to tell any story they want. It could be my road trip with my friends across uh, the Egyptian desert, or it could be a wedding that I, you know, um, me and my friends and our Instagram photos and our tweets and things like that. Like we're we're basically saying that this is the next generation of social media behavior. People are already creating so much stuff, but it's in the noise. So we're trying to make meaning, take it out of the noise, and make meaningful stories. So our goal with this is we want 18, uh, sorry, we want Groupstream to sort of be the, the site where you come for fill in the blank, like crowdsource wedding documentation, crowdsource news, uh, crowdsource conference documentation. Uh, basically, it, any type of content or topic that people want and people start following their interests and users. Uh, and that's sort of what we're building right now is the second iteration. How do you, sorry, uh, no, do you have a question? So yeah. who's your target market? I mean, yeah. Who's going to pay to use you? It's it's free. It's free. It's free. So uh, clients are one thing, but the user ba users are free. This will be a free platform, and we're targeting uh, millennials that are tech savvy, social media enthusiasts, and people that are we're, we're calling the national storytellers. So people that already are bloggers, 
people who are on Twitterati, I like to call them. Uh, so the people that are already like, um, uh, it, obviously actually women are dominate the market in social media from a creation point of view over men. Uh, I think it's like 55% of women are uh, more are more creating more than men, something like that is uh, the number. I don't have the statistics. But we're, so we're targeting, yes, the, the younger, the younger millennials that are already, that's like their, their behavior online and they're spending hours, seven hours a day. And, uh, and, and for the, we're also, for the observers, we're also targeting people that are interested in just interests or news or what's happening, but you don't even have to sign up to do that. You can just be, um, you can just go to the website and see sort of what people are creating around the world uh, based on tags or location or categories. And, um, uh, if you want to follow a story, so the idea that it's built on social media is that this can keep. This is a story that keeps living. It keeps growing. So like you know, no one knew how many days the revolution. The first those 18 days were going to you know to topple a dictator. We didn't know it was 18 days. So that's a story that would have taken evolved over time. So the idea is like you can follow a story or a user if you like one user or a group of user or an organization. You can follow like a, an HR uh, sorry a human rights organization or NGOs or. News. So how are you going to make money? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we're basically looking at something similar to the Twitter model, the promoted tweets. Uh, so our clients would be media agencies and uh, news outlets and we would um, do sort of in-stream advertising based on um, a topic or related tag. Uh, and. Um, we're also looking at different types of uh, subscription models that are providing more of like a, a prosumer account that allows you to customize and white label and brand your streams and provide you analytics on them and uh, things like that. Okay. What's the biggest challenge you've had? The biggest challenge? Uh, I would say we've had big two big challenges. One is... Um, uh, I mean, we've been obviously we've been bootstrapping this for a while now, so finance funding has always been one of the biggest challenges. Just because, yes, you're working for full time, but how sustainable can it be? I want to sort of be able to pay everyone on the team to do something they love. We all love what we're doing, and that's why we've been doing it for so long for for, for nothing. You know, we really believe in it. I would say our biggest, our second biggest challenge is. Um, um, Focus, focus. Like it's really, it's really easy to sort of be like, oh, you want to have all the features, all the, all the different things, to make sure you include it. But it, it, it takes discipline. Sort of like, no, we need to do this. Is the, you know, this is what we'll do now. In the future, we can think about that. But just like learning to, to focus is always harder. It's always easy to say like, we'll do this and this and this and this. So do you, do you have a background in? Um in this kind of stuff, computers or uh, um, yes, business? Yes, yes. I mean, I'm actually, my background is technical. I was computer science as an undergrad, but then my master's was at an art school. So I went to, uh, it's an arts and technology background, and um, I worked in, besides being a software developer, I also worked in interactive museums uh, exhibits. So I have a background in how to use technology for more innovative ways or how to tell, convey a story using technology. So it's like more of a means than a tool. Um, and my partner, one of my partners is a journalism background, uh, a documentary filmmaker and, and um, journalism. And then the rest of us are developers and we have another designer who also comes from a film background turned to design and interaction design. So uh, we have a bunch of interdisciplinary, our team is a bit like a mixed interdisciplinary team. So what's the next step for you? Uh, well, the next step is we are building a mobile app. Uh, we think it makes sense to go with um, it's it's a device that is with you. It's how you create like the prolifer like proliferation of smartphones has sort of enabled like you see the growth of social media because of that or like it's been a driver. Smartphones have become a driver. So we're moving to a, a smartphone application and sort of being the entry point for the product and how you consume and find the news uh, or the stories and um, basically we want it Groupstream right now is private beta it's not out it's still closed uh, we want to launch finally so we're, we're trying to aim for uh, hopefully with some funding we can get to the market in in you know May you know it's gonna be very exciting <laughs> so uh, yeah just launching publicly and get, getting it out there and iterating figuring out what people like what people don't like and I'm still finding it hard yeah. to um, understand why I'd come to you as opposed yeah. to just searching on YouTube for a yeah. story. Yeah, I mean, so... I, What's your USP? Well, we, basically, you could still search on YouTube, but mm. we're trying to say that one video is maybe not enough context. Like, uh,
could also, if you're looking for a video that's funny, okay, or about a certain topic that's well edited and put together, that's fine. But we're sort of saying that like behavior now is sort of like more real time and on the ground. You're creating things, and you might not actually be creating that. Like maybe yeah, maybe you will catch that video of something that like you know somebody getting shot or something that's like a, you know an event, and maybe you do upload it to YouTube. But sometimes you need a little more context. Um, when we started 18 days in Egypt, uh, actually uh, uh, February last year we started it. Um, we got an, a video submission from YouTube, and this guy submitted this video, and it's this video that sort of made us pivot our, our, our uh, what we were building. Where the video was a bunch of people were yelling at each other. There was a lot of broken cement on cinder blocks on the floor, and you had soldiers jumping off the bridge. And I, I mean, I understand what they're saying to each other. I know where this was on the bridge, and I know it was January 28th because it's tagged. But there was no description. There was no, not enough information about why people were threatening each other. It, I had no. I mean, it wasn't a very amazing video, but it was just completely out of context. And that's the problem that we're seeing with um, a lot of these types of standalone. Like, there's a bigger story that can be told if you're combining the stuff you're creating on different, like, in different perspectives. Like the idea that if it's like, fine, this story, this video could make sense if another guy who was there is also talking about it, or if it's um, you're getting multiple perspectives about the event at the same time. So that's sort of our goal. It's not that we're trying to replace, we're not trying to replace YouTube or Facebook, we're trying to play nice with everybody, but add a layer on top of it to make a story. Our aim is just to make, um, uh, empower people to sort of say, share things in their own voice and their own media. Because I, I'm not a journalist and I do go to some events that I think I have something to say about or, you know, maybe my network is interested in my story since my friends in California, my friends in, I don't know, Japan know me and they want to know what's happening in Egypt through my eyes. Um, it's just changing the way that we're, you know, it, it, it's behavior is ch changing and we're just saying that we're trying to be one step ahead. I mean, even on Twitter, um, the average, there was a forced, I think it was forced, or I might, don't, I might be misquoting, but I remember what research firm, they said, say it basically that on Twitter, um, people are following individuals before they actually follow CNN or they'll go to the individuals over CNN. So I'm saying, I think there's like, there's definitely this trend to how we consume and how we uh, experience or what kind of information we want is, is has very, it's become very different. And we're also creating it in a different way. So we're just trying to, um, we're saying that it's moving in this direction and uh, hopefully people will uh, agree with us, but yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much.